So if you've applied for an immigration benefit to USCIS, such as an application for a green card or an application for a change of status, you might be required to provide your biometrics information as part of your application process. In this video, I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play of everything you can expect at your USCIS biometrics appointment. And I'm also going to share some tips with you that can help you have a good experience at the USCIS application support center where your biometrics are going to be collected. Now, first things first, what you should know about this appointment is that it's not going to be an interview experience not even close. All the USCIS biometrics appointment is, is an opportunity for USCIS to see you in person and to collect some identifiable metrics such as your fingerprints and a photograph of yourself. Now, if your USCIS application requires your biometrics information, USCIS will send you a biometrics appointment notice. And usually you can expect to receive this biometrics notice from USCIS within 12 weeks after you filed your immigration application. Now, during this appointment, you don't have to pay a fee for the collection of your biometrics, as you would have already paid this fee at the time you filed your application to USCIS. Now, your appointment notice will also come with a worksheet that has to be completed before you attend your biometrics appointment. Now, when you receive the biometrics notice, it's going to have the location of the USCIS application support center where your biometrics information is going to be collected. It's also going to have the scheduled date and time of your appointment. Now, something else to pay attention to on this form is the code number that appears on the top right corner. Now, this code number could take the numbers one, numbers two, or numbers three, and these numbers will decide what type of biometrics information that you're going to be required to provide on the day of your appointment. Now, I'm going to be explaining the differences between these code numbers later on, but for now, let's talk about what you should bring during your appointment. So on the day of your appointment, you're going to need to have a valid photo identification. Now, this could be a valid driver's license. It could be your passport. And for certain applicants, a green card could be a required form of identification during your appointment. You're also going to need the original copy of your biometrics appointment notice. Now on the day of your appointment, you should plan to get there on time and preferably you should get there about 15 minutes before your scheduled appointment. When you show up at the application support center, you're going to notice signs on the door that tell you that the use of electronic devices are prohibited. So the first thing you should do is to turn off your phone if you're going to be taking that into the building. Now, once you walk into the building, you're going to meet a receptionist who's going to review your photo identification and will also review your biometrics appointment notice. Once this receptionist confirms your identity and reviews your biometrics appointment notice, you are going to be handed a processing form and a ticket number. Now, this processing form that will be handed to you is just for the use of the biometrics officers. And after that, you will be asked to take a seat and wait for a biometrics officer to call your ticket number. Now, once a biometrics officer calls you by your ticket number, you will walk up to this biometrics officer and hand in all your documents, including the processing form. So here, the biometrics officer will review all your documents and will then enter your information into a computer. Now, depending on the code number that appears on your biometrics appointment notice, what you're going to be asked to do at this point is going to vary. Now, if your code number states codes two or three, the biometrics officer will ask you to take a seat where your digital photograph will be taken. And on the other hand, if your code number states code number one, your digital photograph will not be taken. And when it comes to the scanning of your fingerprints, if you have code number one, then you can expect to get all your fingerprints scanned. If you have code number two, you're only gonna have your left and right index fingers scanned. And if you have code number three, again, just like code number one, you can expect to have all your fingerprints captured. Now, don't worry about making any mistakes with the scanning of your fingerprints as the biometrics officer is going to be there to make sure that your fingerprints are properly scanned into the system. Now, for codes number two and three, after your fingerprints have been scanned, you will be asked to provide your electronic signature. Now, once this process has been completed, the biometrics officer will stamp your Form I-797C marking that your biometrics information have been collected. And after that, your job is done and you may leave the application support center. Now, the total time spent during your appointment shouldn't exceed 20 minutes. But in some cases where you have a lot of people waiting before you, or if you have few biometrics officers, 
your appointment time could exceed 20 minutes. Now, most of these biometrics officers are very professional and very polite, so you should expect your experience to be quite pleasant. Now, you should understand that by providing your biometrics information to USCIS, you are granting USCIS permission to conduct a criminal background search on you. Now, if you have a criminal history and you're worried about the outcome of this background search and how that could affect your immigration application, then I'll highly recommend you seek the counseling of an experienced immigration attorney. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you on the next video.